Welcome to Airlines 101 with Laura. And today we're going to be looking at how we get our weather observations from high altitude radio sound balloons. I'm here today at the National Weather Service Shreveport office and we're going to get ready to launch a weather balloon really shortly to do the upper air radio sound observation. The National Weather Service Weather Forecast Office in Shreveport, Louisiana is located adjacent to Shreveport Regional Airport, and this is their site area. Uh, behind me is the Radio Sonde Launching Building, the building where they get the balloon ready and fill it with hydrogen before the launch. You may have heard me mention that they use hydrogen and wondered about the safety of that. Well, they use hydrogen because it is a lot cheaper and they do ground all their equipment when filling the balloon. They showed that it takes about 1,500 grams of hydrogen to lift the balloon off the post, and they want it to get to the 400 millibar altitude level to make it an official flight. If you see the balloon, it's biodegradable. It's inflating here. It has three parts. We have the balloon, the radio sonde, and the parachute. The parachute is that orange thing right there that he's holding, and it makes sure nobody gets hurt on the way down. Those are the hydrogen tanks that you saw, and here's the balloon at its full inflation. Having filled the balloon, we went back inside to check the radio sound and make sure it was connected to the GPS antenna. And this used to be like this, this, this process right here is so streamlined. Um, just being able to control everything from one spot. Um, the, if you saw like the, the dome up on top of the upper building, that's where our, uh, our dish is for uh, the baseline here. My temperature, relative humidity, and my pressures are all coming in here, and basically this is just letting me know that my connection has been established. So I'm making sure that I've got matches. I'm making sure that all of this is filling in. And you can see the blue is where the, the, the dish is pointing, and the green is where my radius on is. And this is actually one of the, the, uh, the better looking ones I've had in a while. Yesterday I had to get it set up, and I had to take it outside and hang hang it on the on the post, and. Call back in the office to see if I was getting matches because it was just taking forever. I'm here with the radio sound about to be launched. The checks are complete and now you can see that he is fastening out about a hundred feet of string that is going to be attached the radio sound package to that balloon. And they do two launches daily at 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. during daylight savings time and they're about to launch the balloon. And there it goes up into the air and you can see it as it goes up. They do this at 70 different launch sites around the United States. They have an hour and 29 minute weather window in case there is weather problems like during a thunderstorm they won't launch the balloon. During a weather event like a hurricane they might launch more frequently like every four hours. Eventually now the balloon expands so much that it pops. It gets to be about the size of the launching building at about 100,000 feet in the air before it actually pops. Here is the information that we got back from our launch, and a 9-volt battery is powering this for only about two hours of the transmission. You can see that it's transmitting the data live back to the site, and there's no launch clearance required from ATC before they do the launch, but they do call just to get the all clear, okay and all clear to go. Thanks again for watching Airlines 101 with Laura. Thanks especially to our friends at the National Weather Service and the Weather Forecast Office in Shreveport. If you like what you see here, Click the subscribe button as I sometimes am uploading content not as frequently as I'd like, but I appreciate all the support from my watchers.